All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rechak, Wadash. Don't want to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole four elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I'm responding to a uh, Sakari Memphis. And this is a uh, video was posted up a day ago. And uh, this is one of their uh, speakers. It kind of remind me of a uh, Busy Bone in the first of the month uh, music video. You got the Afro out. <laughs> but uh, this is another one of um, Sakari's uh, disciples, the students, teachers. And uh, they're trying to elaborate on Paul's letters. And uh, of course, before I even begin on it, I got to start off with uh, what Apostle Peter said about Paul in his writings. Second Peter 3 and 14 in the NLT. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience give people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom the Most High gave him. Right? The wisdom that the Most High gave him. But, uh, you know, according to the head guy over there, you know, Paul took that wisdom and, uh, you know, he, he, he became an author of, of confusion, right? And his words became uh, all of a sudden unauthoritative. You know, it has no uh, power, authority whatsoever. But this is uh, Apostle Peter, and this is what he had to say about Apostle Paul. He says, speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant, like those scribes and Pharisees and chief priests, those that uh, you know, tried to put him or, or accused him to get him uh, locked away, incarcerated, all right, that, that put him in the hands of uh, the governors so that he can be interrogated. You know, they was getting offended at some of the things he was teaching and saying which is based on the commandment, all right, of, uh, of the Lord, the Lord himself. Think about it. If Paul was contrary and was doing his own thing, why did he fulfill what Yahweh Shai said would happen to his disciples for his sake? When he told them that you're going to be brought before uh, governors and kings for my name's sake, you know, for a testimony. Why did that happen to Paul? If Paul was, you know, such such a contrarian to the true gospel. Anyway, it says, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different. Which, you know, you're going to uh, hear in this uh, video right here. Showing that these younger dudes up under uh, the head guy, um, they're being led astray. All right, the leaders cause these, these people to err. And, you know, that's because he's coming from his own uh, selfish ambitions. All right, he has his own uh, motives. So, you know, they learn they learn how to twist it from him. Okay. And uh, you know, it's it's a sad ordeal because, you know, some of these younger dudes, you know, they 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 mean well. Some of them are sincere, but they're just sincerely lost. You know, they've been they they were made twofold the children of hell, then their leader. They just become uh caricatures. Of the leadership. Anyway it says. Just as they do. 
with other parts of scripture and this will result in their destruction so <clears throat> i'm gonna just uh, play the, the clip and i'm gonna pause it after certain points and i'm i'm gonna go into the scriptures of course because you know he's gonna you know try to break these things down and it's like why are y'all continuing to go into these uh letters when you know you don't believe that he's authoritative you know you you really don't take his writings serious even though his writings make up the majority of the new testament so when you go in and try to elaborate and break it down you end up uh uh embarrassing yourselves you know you prove that you really don't understand so let's uh listen real quick growing their uh, religion and things of that nature right but and the reason i say this is because paul himself admitted that he spoke as a man at times right let me get this because Christians believe, or there are a plethora of Christians rather, that believe that the entire Bible is the word of God, right? Definitively, meaning it, it has to be the word of God, right? But Paul himself says. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's read this in the KJV. Because Peter referred to the writings of Paul as scripture. And we brought this out before dealing with this topic. Uh, Second Peter three. Yeah, uh, three and uh, I'll read it uh, 15 again. It says an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him have written unto you as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some hard, some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction so the accounts in the law the prophets the psalms those are the scriptures but when talking about the epistles and how guys are having a hard time understanding his epistles the same way they have a hard time understanding the scriptures he said he, he referred to his epistles as the epistles but he, then he said the other scriptures that would insinuate that Peter is referring to his writings as also scripture all right so therefore if they are all scripture let's go to uh, timothy <clears throat> second timothy 3 and 16 it says all scripture is given by inspiration of the most high so that means that in those epistles, Paul was inspired as he as he wrote them. All right, the, the, the divine Holy Spirit was working on or through Apostle Paul when he wrote through these epistles and was given these instructions and orders. Okay, it was all by divine inspiration of the Most High. This is why we take his scriptures and we use it to correct, to edify. But but dudes want to actually, you know, devalue <laughs> what, what, what was said and what was written. So it's like you resisting the spirit. And I don't think they realize that. Every time they've said remarks against the writings of Paul, they're really resisting the spirit because he was under uh, he, he was in the divine inspiration of the Most High when he wrote those epistles because they were taken as scripture. The church 
at that time that was being built up, they had to uh, uh, conceive all these uh, orders and instructions from him as if they were scripture. And he told them to continue in it because you will actually save your soul and those that hear you. So they would have to be taken as scripture. If what I'm hearing from you is divinely inspired, that means that it's, it's, it's coming from the Heavenly Father through you. So if I hear you and, 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 and uh, apply it and teach it to others, I have a chance of being saved. It says, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All right, that the, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And this is all part of that adorning because we're making ourselves ready for the bridegroom. So order has to be established. And that was one of the main things contained in these letters. Establishing order and direction in the church or these churches. Because Paul having that responsibility over the Israelite foreigners, the Gentiles, he had to espouse them to, to, to one husband in Yahawashai. And he wanted to uh, present them as chaste virgins, unspotted from all the filth of, of, of the world. At that time, it was the, the 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 Greek world, where the fashion of the Greek world was, you know, idolatry, being out of order, you know, moral uncleanness, impurity, women uh, 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 teaching men, men of being effeminate, rocking long hair. All right, he had to give them the proper the proper protocol and order of how to 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 conduct themselves as followers of the anointing. Can't be like this this world, this corrupted world that we live in. So anyway, let's get back to it. That is not the case. That there's some things he spoke or wrote about rather. To in his letters that were not necessarily um, of God, or not not that they're not of God, but they're not directly from the Most High God, the Most High God, God's words, right? Yeah, uh, he's mentioned in, in several uh, chapters of his epistle that some of the things that he had to say, which was basically advice, was was not by commandment. All right. He was basically just giving them advice. Let me go here real quick. Like when he talks about marriage and he talks about not dealing with a woman, there's no commandment that says you're not supposed to deal with a woman. But he's advising men, if you want to appear to the Lord unspotted, without distraction, and give your whole devotion to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, then it's, it's good to not even deal with a woman. And he spoke that by advice not by commandment all right so let me get this real quick first corinthians 7 and uh 6 but i speak this by permission and not of commandment and he's teaching on how to deal in, in a marriage all right whether um you actually do get married or how to deal with your wife if you are married to a woman the mindset to have like making sure that you're not defrauding one another in your marriage. Okay? Uh, uh, how to deal with a woman that's not a, a believer or a woman uh, dealing with a man that's not a believer. All right, all these things are, are, are goodly advice. Okay? And that's to, to, to main, maintain structure and order. So that things don't fall apart and, and increase the ungodliness. All right. So, yeah, like this chapter, for example. All right. He, he's speaking this by permission and not by commandment. 
but you still want to, you know, take his advice. All right, because he, he was a godly man. The scriptures say, uh, um, was that in, in Proverbs, mark the perfect man. And and Paul, you know, even though he he he, he had his flaws, but in the spirit, especially after the Lord, you know, woke him up and dealt with them, you know, he he what 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 is there to really condemn? He was he was that example to the Israelite foreigners to 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 you know make that 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 step you know towards righteousness and towards the ministry and he and he he forsook you know his past where you know he was a, a master in the law he was a pharisee of the pharisees but he were, he admitted that he was persecuting the church not understanding the purpose so the lord you know humbled him and cleaned him up and he became a perfect man No, oh, that's what I did. Salakia. So like, yeah. It was a typo. Mark the perfect man. Yeah, Psalms 37 and 37 says, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. All right. And you know, he was he was given instructions on how to basically live a, a, a peaceful life. You know? Whether you in a marriage or whether you uh, solo. So, <clears throat> you know, those are examples, man. All right. But when it comes to actual order, establishing order in the church, you no, know, that was uh, com commanded. It was all by commandment. Anyway, let's uh, continue. Summary. I'm going to start at 1 Corinthians. Chapter 7, I'm going to start at verse 1. It's like, now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me. And I already got to the point. All right. So he's he's going to talk about Paul's advice on, on, on marriage. Right. That was advice and it was not by commandment. All right. So you can say that that wasn't the word of the Most High, but he was in the spirit. So even if the Mosai didn't directly say it, do you think the Mosai would condone it? Do you think the Lord would co-sign what Paul saying there? All right, based on the, the office that the man was given, the Lord wouldn't have put Paul in, in his position if, if, if Paul couldn't give sound advice on, on, on how to live on how to carry yourself in, in, in this ministry. So let me uh skip ahead a little bit. Because this is where he started to go into Corinthians 11 about the order of the woman and the long hair and having your head covered, which, you know, he he he's following his 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 leader, all right? The the the, the chief priest. Uh, uh, crip. So let's uh, listen real quick. We know we see a lot of brothers and things or people on the earth walking around, especially men with long hair nowadays, right? But he's saying it's a womanly thing. I believe somebody's joining me, right? Shalom, bro. Shalom. Yeah. Can you hear me? You right? But he, he Shalom. said. Uh, it's a shame for a man to have that is not how I want to. Yeah, that's too close up. So long. You get a little long. That's fine. You hear me? Uh, can you hear me? You hear me? Yeah. Con, con. I gotta turn my volume up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, con. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, kind of. It's quiet? No, you good. Damn. 
is a book of First Corinthians chapter eleven verse fourteen. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seems to be contentious with, uh, we have no such custom, neither neither the churches of God. Right. So after talking about how it's a shame for a man to have long hair or a woman uh, to have short hair, essentially. Right. And how uh, the glory of a woman is her having longer hair. Right. He says uh, in contentious, man, there's no such custom. So he's speaking on customs. Right. And which is why it doesn't make sense for a lot of people when they talk about brothers covering their heads when they're teaching on the streets and things like that, because he's speaking on custom. That was a custom. Uh, for the Corinthians to do such things, that a woman has to cover her hair when she prays and things of that nature. So you see right here, he 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 doesn't. He, that's why I started off with um, what Peter said about Paul in his writings. He clearly didn't understand what Paul was saying there. Paul said, "We have no such custom." Talking about wearing long hair. All right. Um, you know, women not covering their heads because the custom among us was women they knew to 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 be shamefaced. So they had to dress very modest. They had to cover themselves up. They would even stay, they would be veiled up. They would cover their face, they would cover their heads, they would cover their bodies. Okay? Because that was the the uh, the order, that was the custom for the woman. The men, they were not to wear long hair because it was a shame unto them. And there's even accounts in the scriptures where the Lord commanded. Let, 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 me, uh, let me see if I can find it. I believe it's in Ezekiel. Let me real quick. Ezekiel 44. <clears throat> Ezekiel 44. And I believe this is dealing with uh, the priest. Yeah, this is dealing with the priest. All right, which, you know, your leader claimed to be the, 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 the chiefest, right? Uh, Ezekiel 44. And uh, I'll start at 17. It says, and it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. And they shall have linen bonnets upon their heads and they shall have linen breeches upon their loins and the, and." They shall not grit themselves with anything that causes sweat. And when they go forth into the utter court, even unto the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments with, wherein they ministered and lay them in the holy chambers. And they shall put on uh, other garments. And they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. So this was a, a commandment from the Lord dealing with the priests when they entered in. All right. And, and did the um, the service. When they would go to the people, they were not to shave their heads, meaning no, they should not make any baldness upon your head. But also, if you got hair, don't let your hair grow too long. Right. Don't let it grow long. They shall only pull their heads. What does it mean to pull? It means to cut, clip, trim. All right. Meaning you can, you know, trim it down. But don't suffer it. Don't allow it to grow long. All right. And then you have another example where you had a man, <clears throat> all 
all right, which we all know who this man was. You know, he was a son of, of the king who, who betrayed his own father, right? Was it Second uh, Samuel 18? And how, did, and, and, and how did he go out? 2 Samuel 18, and starting at verse 9. And it says, And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick buffs of a great oak, and his head caught, had, and his head caught hold of the oak. And he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest that sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. Even though he was uh, advised by David not to, to kill him. But, uh, you know, Joab felt like, man, he no, he's a traitor. And he went beside the, the commandment of the king. And we know what gets, was getting ready to happen. And, but he still, you know, went against the order of, of, of the king. This is why later down the line, he ended up getting judged. All right. <clears throat> but this is how Absalom went out. You know, because the man, he was a he was a vain dude. He had, he had he had long ass hair, man, very long hair, and that ended up catching up with them. All right. And the man said unto Joab, though I had, though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son, for in our hearing the king charged thee and Abishai, and Ittai, saying. Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I should have wrought falsehood against mine own life. For there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I will not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. So that's how they got him. And ten young men that bare Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. You know, and he would have probably got away if he didn't have that that long ass hair. So let me uh real quick, this is what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> Where it says his head, and I'm gonna just read this right here. And I think this is from a commentary. It says, riding uh, furiously under the thick buffs of a great oak, which hung low and had never been cropped, either the twisted branches or some low forked buff of the tree caught him by the neck or as some think by the loops into which his long hair had been pinned. Right. And, and, and that's the latter, which according to the scriptures that will have to be. Uh, factual because it talks about how 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 heavy his hair uh, weighed so he had very long hair and we know that jake got coarse hair and it's thick and it, and it, it stands up because it has life to it so his hair was probably like this you know the the, the brother that's speaking but i'm pretty sure a lot even uh, uh, his fro was a lot bigger than that all right, way longer than than what he has, and riding up under a, a, a oak tree where the both is uh, the branch of it is sitting low, and he's riding up on that mule. He and the rule the, the mule roll roll right up under it, and he didn't think that his hair would actually uh, get caught in it and attached, pinned uh, to that buff. So now you are a, a hanging target. That's how that's how it left him. It says, which had been so much his pride. That like like Alizar, his hair is his pride. That's why he refused all these years, you know, to, to cut it down. You know? That was part of the controversy in him uh, uh leaving the camp. 
or Schlock is not leaving, getting kicked out because he didn't want to uh, follow that order. I remember years ago, the apostles put the decree out. This is back in like uh, 2011, the end of 2011. And, you know, various brothers had long hair. I, myself, I had braids. You know, I, I used to rock my fro. My fro used to be damn near the same size as uh, the Sakari member. I used to have my fro out. I had braids and all that. But, you know, back at the time, the apostle was stressing for brothers to, to you know, cut with the vanity. You know, stop with the damn vanity. A lot of you dudes is growing your hair. It's not because you took on a Nazarite vow. You know that the, the, the ladies like it. You like when women comp compliment you. Rub their hands uh, through your hair. You know, you, you like the attention that it gets, but that, that all falls under vanity. You know, we're supposed to be men. So when the, the apostles put that decree out years ago, brothers that were sincere, they hopped right on it. I, and I, 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 I had no problems at all, man. I was like, con. No questions asked, no no uh, uh, murmuring, no questioning and complaining. And 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 that that night after camp, we went back to the spot. Brothers that had clippers, and was cut all all of us that had long hair and braids. We 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 cut it all off. Okay, this dude Alizar, he wanted to continue to do what he, what he been doing. So that dude had a lot of pride. And he was, you know, it was about him being a, a, a under the Nazarite vow. But we know that when we, when when come time for um the Passover, the Pesach, you got to drink that wine, the, the blood of the grape. And according to the Nazarite vow, if you drink anything of, of, of grape, you got to uh, you got to shave your head off, your, your hair off. You got to cut your hair. So he tried to go around that and be like, well, I'm going to just drink honey wine then. What the hell? So <clears throat> it's out of pride and, and it's out of vanity at the end of the day. All right. And Paul, he was just making sure that the, the, the church get ordered right. Because that was the fashion of, of, of that world. Men having long ass hair, which was a feminine. It was seen as a feminine. So it says, made a halter for him. He may have hung so low from the buff in consequence of the length of his hair that he could not use his hands to help himself. Or so entangled that his hands were bound so that the more he struggled, the more he was embarrassed. This set him up as a fair mark to the servants of David. And although David would have spared his rebellious son, if his orders had been executed, yet he could not turn the sword of divine justice and executing the just righteous sentence of death on this traitorous son. And, and he was worthy of death. But, you know, David just had a soft spot in his heart for him. But he, you know, he... He was trying to take his own pops out. He slept with his own father's uh, concubines. So it, it, it was that, it, it, you know, he, he needed to die. But, you know, at the time, you know, the, King David, you know, he, he wanted to spare him. You know, he had a soft spot in his heart for him. But uh, you see how he got caught up. He got caught up in his own vanity. That's how he... Got got set in that that snare that trap. Okay, that long ass hair, man, because that was his pride. So, <clears throat> the hair has never been the glory of, of the man. That that's the woman's glory. Okay, and that's what Paul was 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 uh, reiterating. And when you start at the top of the chapter, it's dealing with order, which a lot of these dudes then proved over the course of time that they're against order. 
And even some of these affiliate dudes this is why you finding out about these dudes. Some of them is because some of them that are in, in their predicament now is because they don't want to come up under order. So the Lord is not going to have any confusion up under him. He's not the author of confusion. This is a government that he's ordering and is being uh, made ready and prepared. So these are the measures that are taken, that are being taken so that the house can be in order. So first, first Corinthians 11 and 1, it says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of a Mashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So these are actual orders that are being uh, passed down. But I would have you know that the head of every man is a Mashiach. All right. Our authority is Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man. So the woman's authority is her husband. And the head of a Mashiach is Yahweh, the Most High God. That's who he answers to. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. And he's not speaking this by permission. He's speaking this by commandment. All right. Because this is the actual order. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered this honor of her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. You know, a woman uh, worshiping with her head uncovered is, is as shameful as a woman who has her head uh, shaved. You know? Women value their hair. So it is shameful when, when they're bald. They don't like to be bald. You see that in our women. They don't like to be bald. That's why they go the miles that they go <laughs> to, to get that, that extra set of hair on their head, even though it ain't theirs. It says, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. If, if, if you're not going to cover your head when you when you praying and, and, and prophesying or worshiping, then you might as well just shave your head. Go on and shave it. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, then let her be covered. Cover it. You can leave it out for your husband. That, that's, that's for him to see. Right? It says, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of the Most High. But the woman is the glory of the man. For, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man. And that's fact. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Facts. This is all verified in the, in the scriptures. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man and the Lord. Because you know, that was designed and ordained from the beginning. That a man must leave his uh, father and mother and go cleave to his wife and they be uh become twain they become one flesh it says for as the woman is of the the man even so is the man also by the woman because he was born through her but all things of yahweh judge in yourselves is it calmly that a woman pray unto the most high uncovered do if not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. And yeah, it, nature did show. It, it, it showed uh, Absalom. All right. Plus, it's it's, a, it's 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 feminine. What you need long long hair for? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory unto her, for it. If her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, you know, meaning you're um disputatious, you know, you 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 gotta find some type of uh fault, you know, you 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 just gotta argue. And that's you know what what, what these guys are doing. They just wanna argue with the order. 
contentious causing or likely to cause an, an argument or controversial giving rise or likely to give rise to public disagreement disputable not established as a fact or so open to question or debate you know, dudes want, want to be in that uh, debate spirit you know, why are we debating this is either you follow the order or you don't but we have no such custom we we, we don't rock long hair around here because we're men when we pray and we prophesy we have respect for our lord so we're not going to have nothing on the top of our heads when we're praying and prophesying it's out of respect reverence okay plus you know wearing the hat back at this time that was a a, a custom of the heathen that's where they got it from okay the the the, the greeks made that a, a custom to worship their uh, idols so why would you uh, uh present your body your body as a living sacrifice what a custom that's used in devotion to an idol why would you do that so if you want to be contentious just know that that's we're not accustomed to that that's we have no that's not the tradition all right and neither do none of the other churches. And he's telling the church of Corinth, even the other churches outside of this church, we, we don't do that. All right? Because it's out of order. So, just like the other brother that got caught up uh, in uh, when he was going back and forth with the Christian and he went off on, um, uh, what was the scripture? Um, was it Romans uh, four, four and uh, five? You know, one of the one of those one of the epistles he he was going off on. You know, so here it is. He's trying to go into the order, going into the letter, and he now you there's another young guy, going off. Glory of a woman is her having longer hair, right? He says, uh, in contentious man, there's no such custom. So he's speaking. On customs, right? Which is why it doesn't make sense for a lot of people when they talk about brothers covering their heads when they're teaching on the streets and things like that, because he's speaking on custom. That was a custom uh, for the Corinthians to do such things that a woman has to cover her hair when she prays and things of that nature, right? So that yeah, wasn't a custom for her to 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 not cover her head. All right, in 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 the Greek world, the women they 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 did whatever. You know, they were e they, just like today, women being equal with the man and, and usurping authority over them. That was a thing back then. But they were worshiping them Greek goddesses. So they was elevating and putting the woman on a pedestal even then. So the women, they was able to walk around with their hair out. They didn't have to cover, cover themselves. They can, you know, talk to men like they were equal with them. The men having long hair, we we didn't have that wasn't a custom among us. Yep. Now go to X twenty one. Then of course, and we already dealt with this. Paul never went off, and he didn't have to correct himself. But they they're gonna present it as if he went off, and that's why the elders told him to go and uh, you know, pay for those uh vows. You know, for those th th those men that are uh, that were going to undergo the, those ceremonies, Paul he, he he didn't go off. He didn't teach against the law, but to take the heat off of himself, the the elders recommended that he do that, in which he actually went and did it. But he didn't go off as far as the doctrine is concerned. So they still at it, man. They they but. You know, it's a given because they got to follow, you know, their leader. They got to teach what he teach. But he's leading them, uh, you know, down that 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 path of destruction, man. All right. So this is why we, you know, when we see these things, you know, we scrutinize it and 
you know, we 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 mark those that cause that division, and 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 you know, we point them out and and avoid them. So, I'm gonna just end the the, the video right there, and if brothers want to pick up on it, this is the uh, the channel. And this is the uh, the video here. Hebrew Israelites explain Paul's letters. All right, Sakari Mephis. So, yeah, y'all, y'all, and, and it's not looking too good over there, man. You know, people stepping down, people trying to figure out what's going on. Y'all trying to be secretive, and you know, you don't really want to let nobody know what's really going on. The Lord is going to start opening up, man. So. With that, I'm going to give all praise to y'all by Shemiel Shai. To the next one, Shalom.